and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, make sure to head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and most reliable coins on the market right now. Head on over to Buy Madden Coins and use code Pula at checkout for 20% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Pula back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today I'm gonna be going over the best player to choose from the turkey set. Now, if you guys know what I'm talking about, the Harvest promo does guarantee one free 90 overall player from the turkey solos. Now, if you guys didn't watch my video yesterday or my 1030 video today, you would have already seen that they do give you one player. Now, the way you make these club players are pretty, pretty unique, right? They've done this in the past for many other promos. Or, or should I say last year they did it with Michael Irvin or two years ago. So this works, there's two ways to get these players. There's about, there's eight, nine, two of our players, four defensive, four offensive. These are the players that you do use to create the Michael Irvin slash Night Train lane set. So obviously getting these cards are unique and especially with this promo because you get them Nat and the set to do them are make them Nat anyway. So it kind of behooves you to put them in anyway. So obviously once I know the full extent of how much they cost not to get them, I will give you guys a fire video going over the best way to get them for cheap and do everything like that. But until then, I'm gonna rank all eight for you guys so you guys know the best ones to choose. So you get one free option. If you play through the solo uh, sequence and you get to, you finish all the solos, you get one free 92. And then, like I said, it's four defensive for offense. I'm gonna rank them all from eight to one, going from worst to greatest, obviously. I'm gonna show you guys who I think is the best ones to choose. And typically my bottom four guys, I really can't recommend, but I, there are specific team scenarios where they could be useful. So obviously I'm still gonna give them to you. Now, some of these cards are a little underwhelming. Some of these have a lot of potential with the right power-ups and right chemistry upgrades. So, obviously, they're not all bust. But I got to go into all of them, obviously. If you guys already know some of them, like Kerrigan, there's Odell, Brady. If you guys haven't seen that already, you should go watch my video. But I'm ranking these guys. Hopefully, this can help you guys pick yours. And remember, we could also get a house rules. And we can also make them using collectibles and powering up the 76 overall. So, you could also make more. Don't think that this is your only option to get one of these. And guys, before we get into this video, make sure you're down below. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification boys. Come join the family. We're growing out to third. We're going to 13K pretty fast. We're already at like 12.3, guys. So let's see how quickly we can keep growing. And make sure to like this video, guys. You guys have been smashing the like button, like I say in every video. You guys are the best fan base. Thank you guys for all that. You guys have smashed the like button lately. Let's see if we can get 400 likes in this video. Everyone watching right now, smash that like button. Every video I post, the like button flies up. You guys are great. Appreciate that support is what drives this channel, guys. And make sure to comment down below. Give me your top four. I want to hear everyone's top four to see how much you differ from mine. Now, guys, let's head over to the screenshots, show you guys all the players, and rank them from eight to one. All right, so coming in at number eight, we got Ryan Kerrigan, guys. Now, I didn't want to put him this low, but when you relate him to other cards you could get at his value, he's probably not worth it. He's six foot four, 77 speed, 83 excel, 83 strength, 90 tackle, 93 play rec, 82 block shed, 91 power move, 84 finesse move. Now, the, the, play, the finesse move and the power move is amazing. He's a great pass rusher. The play rec's amazing. The tackle's amazing. But the block shed's really low, and I kind of need an outside linebacker to help me in the run game. And he's only had, he only has 77 speed. So for me personally, in my opinion, I typically rush Lawrence Taylor. And quite honestly, guys, for me, my outside linebackers, I only rush one of them. So I have Lawrence Taylor, who's a better version of this Ryan Kerrigan. And not to mention, he should be getting an upgrade pretty soon. Ryan Kerrigan is a little too slow for my liking. And if he ever gets put in zone or anything, he's going to be too slow. And in the run game, he's going to be too slow. He's going to easily get ran around. And his block is not too great. So that's why I can't put him that high because I feel like there's not much potential for growth with him, especially since I don't think I don't think he'll get many better cards for quite a while. So you're gonna kind of be stuck with this. And he if he was if his next card was coming soon, he could be great with the block shed and speed higher. But for the time being, this is what you're gonna be stuck with. Now for the next guy. Now for the next card at number seven, we got Zach Ertz. Now, similar to my critique on his Mutt Superstar card. He's a little too unathletic for my liking, but he does have some really redeeming qualities now that he has an 81 speed. My only issue with his 81 speed is going to be that this might be the last card he gets for maybe till after Christmas. So this card is going to have an 81 speed, which for me at tight end right now is already too slow. I think Kittle had an 83, 80, 45 in that area, depending which one you have. Already is like a little sluggish. So the Zach Ertz definitely doesn't feel much different. His catching is amazing. He could be a great red zone threat, but at this point in the game, I'd much rather use my Moss or something else as a red zone threat than get a really slow tight end. His route running is phenomenal, but his speed's not too great. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Out routes with Ertz could be overpowered because as long as he has the great route running, he could easily get around linebackers and still get you like five, 10 yard gains, but he can't break the big run. But other than that, if his run block was like an 80, guys, I could fully be on board with this card. But his run block's too low, so he's strictly a receiver, which kind of sucks in that case because since he's strictly a receiver, you want more speed out of him. All right, coming at number six, we got Tom Brady, who I've commonly called in this channel Tom Bradley, but people get really confused when I do that. So he's six foot four, 55 speed's horrendous, but it's Tom Brady, right? So we're not expecting speed. 88 throw power is kind of what sold me against this card because I have Lamar Jackson, right? His throw power is horrible. 
and I could feel it. I really, I didn't realize how important throw power was for a while. Like I knew it was important, but I didn't really put too much mind to it. But I've realized the reason Lamar can't make a lot of throws is because his throw power. He doesn't throw the ball hard enough or far enough, so I can't, I can't play the deep ball. My out routes, like timing routes, need throw power. That, 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 that's a fact already. Like I've learned why can I throw a seam route to my tenant over the middle between the safeties? It's because Lamar throws balls that are too slow. They're ducks. So by the time they get there, the safety can react, especially with the way the game is now with a lot more speed, a lot more zone. You need that throw power. So for a pocket pass who's not above 80, above 90 throw powers ready to L, his short's amazing, his mid's amazing, but then his deep's too low too. So he can't throw deep and he can't throw hard. So that already kind of puts him in Lamar Jackson range. Not to mention the throw under pressure is horrible, which is bad too, because this year, a lot of pressure, a lot of abilities to get to the quarterback. And without that good throwing, with that throw under pressure being so bad, all these stats up here get negated because every time I'm getting rushed, I can't run away from them. So I'm gonna have to make either really quick reads or throw bad passes. Throwing the runs horrible, which I don't care because I'm gonna be running with him. And his play action, I don't really care for play action. But as a whole, his deep and throw power and under pressure kind of sell this card against for me. But obviously, if you're a Patriots fan or a Patriots theme team, you could probably use him, probably be amazing on one of those. Next is AJ Bouye, and the only reason he's not higher is because of the speed and because he looks eerily similar to Jalen Ramsey. Now, he looks like a carbon copy of Jalen Ramsey, but slightly less athletic and slightly less as good. So he's got 88 speed, 93 excel, 90 agility, 90 jumping, 91 play rec, 89 man, 89 zone coverage, and 91 press. This card looks just like Ty Law. It looks just like Jalen Ramsey. If you powered up and kept him up, he would have an 89 speed, 90 zone, 90 man, above 90 press. All his stats would be above 90 pretty much besides his speed, which is great, but he's a little bit on the slower side for me, and I'd much rather just have Jalen Ramsey for a similar value in my opinion because you could have got him for free too from the Mud Hero solos and the Mud Hero's house rules. Card's not bad. Still a very good cornerback. But in relation, I'd rather have another cornerback. Coming at number four, we have Odell Beckham Jr., guys. Now, as a Giants fan, this pain is to put him to slow. He's a Brown now, though, so he's dead to me. But besides the point, I'm a, I'm a huge Odell fan. But the stats, I don't know what it is about Odell cards. They never give him correlating stats. He's 5'11", so he's already tiny, right? So if you're tiny, you need amazing route running, and you need great speed. Now, his speed's not great, to be quite honest with you, because... At Odell's card, the way his Odell's card look, I'd much rather have my Tyreek Kill. And you guys can say, oh, Tyreek Kill can't catch as well. Yeah, well, Tyreek Kill's speed doesn't need to catch as well. He's always burning people. So Odell's not going to burn people. Odell's going to be a route running guy with good catching. Now, his jumping is great, his catching is great, but his catching traffic's not great. That's always been a knock on Odell cards for me in the history of Madden. His catching traffic's always really bad, so I can never trust him to do those, those, those timing routes, like those post routes where I throw it right between coverage and he has to take a hit because he'll drop it. So, at this cards, I, I think I'd rather have Moss, I'd rather have my Tyree Kill, I'd rather have my Torrey Holt. I think that's a much better setup with a, to a tall Randy Moss, a route running Torrey Holt. This looks like a Torrey Holt card that's not nearly as good. That's what it is. It's a, it's a budget Torrey Holt card, and don't get me wrong, if you powered up and chemmed him up, you could get the deep route running above 90, the medium route running close to 90, the catch and traffic like an 87, 88, and the spec catch would be insane, and the speed would be 91. But even with all that being said, I still don't even think at that point he's even a top five receiver in this game. And after the Michael Irvin I saw, I'm going to definitely be going after Michael Irvin. So as much as I'd love to have Odell, I might still even choose him depending on the other options and how my team looks. But I don't think it's the option for me at this moment. Next, we got Quentin Nelson. Now, I was debating on putting him below Odell because stats aren't exactly amazing, but he's a lineman, right? So for a free card in a, in a crop of cards that I don't think are actually the best, I think that a good lineman, a nice solid 90, if you powered him up a 93 overall left guard that you could just lock on your team for quite a while would be honestly a boost. And not to mention his lead block's probably insane. And so is his impact block because he's Quentin Nelson. He's got 95 strength, which is insane. 87 awareness is great. 86 pass block, 88 pass block power, 85 pass block finesse, 88 run block, 90 run block power, and 87 run block finesse. Now, powered up and chemmed up, you could probably get all the run block stats on my team with zone run to above 90 with the pass block and coming in at a high 80s which is not bad at all. I think this car will be insane in the run game, which is great for me. Even an upgrade over Bruce Matthews, potentially. Although I don't think he's the best option, he's definitely, at number three, one of my higher options, and that's only because he's a lineman. And sometimes taking a Nat card as a lineman is a great option because you take someone like Ertz, Kerrigan, Brady, Bouye, you're kind of locked in with those guys, at least linemen, you don't really like buying linemen. So why not just get your Nat guy there and then save the coins for another position that you want to buy? That's just my personal opinion. Coming in at number two, I got Adrian Amos. Now, the issue with Amos, and the only reason he's not higher is because he's a strong safety, which means he co he coincides with Pat Tillman, which is kind of the, it's going to be the, the curse of the strong safeties this year because it's hard to ever want to get a strong safety when you have a guy as good as Pat Tillman. Now, Adrian Amos is always the proto prototypical do-it-all safety coverage hitting He's got insane stats, but you can put him as a secondary position for safety, so you can move him over, which is why I put him up as high as he is. He's got, he's six feet tall, so that's a good height. 91 speed's amazing. 90 excels amazing. 75 tackle is a little bit low. 93 play rec's amazing. 88 pursuit's amazing. 80 man coverage for free slash strong safety is insane, because when you blitz, you're going to be able, typically the safety's only going to be blitzing onto a 
in my scheme, the way I set up my blitzes, the safety typically blitzes the line. Uh, he play mans up on the running back or he mans up on the tight end. So man, 80 man coverage is more than enough to cover a tight end or a running back, considering their route running abilities. And then 90 zone, 85 hit power. So he's going to be lock and blitz coverage. He's going to be lock and zone coverage. He's going to be a pretty good enough hitter to stop the run game. Great play rec, great speed, great. He can do it all, which is why I have to have him this high. I think for a lot of teams who don't have Tillman or who can move him to free safety, he's a great option, even over potentially Brian Dawkins. Although I don't know if I trade up my Brian Dawkins for him, but he's definitely close enough with the speed and man coverage boost. Now coming in at number one, guys, this one was tough for me to rank because of his low block shed. But I had to, but but guys, there's just one stat here that just stands out above all. He's six foot five, 80 speed, 86 excel. That makes him one of the most athletic ends in the game, for starters, right? So that's huge because with the way you get pressure this year, the, ba the, the issue with pressure this year is that when you get there, if you have a slower guy like maybe Aaron Donald, with escape artists, you can get away. With a decent enough speed quarterback, you can get away. You can even make the read first, right? Now, what, what counteracts that with the pressure this year plus athleticism? That's why Lawrence Taylor is overpowered because he gets there fast and he gets there quick. And then once, he's, once he gets past the line of scrimmage, He's pretty much sacking my quarterback. So Joey Bo is going to be a similar guy with 80 speed, 86 cell, 86 strength, 78 tackle, 91 play rec is great. 79 block shit is low, but powered up and camped up, you can probably get that's like an 82, which is usable. Although I don't appreciate how it is in the run game. It's still, you, you can't, you can't counter, you just can't go against the fact that he's an 88 power move and a 96 finesse move, guys. Powered up and camped up, he will have a 99 finesse move and it won't be hard to get. It'll just take pass rushing, like tier four which is not that hard to get and then powered up guys he's going to have a 99 finesse move which means he's going to be a pass rush god now see the issue with all the other cards although the other cards might be more well-rounded than bosa none of the other cards become gods right like amos is a good zone guy good hitter nelson's a good blocker odell's a pretty good route runner speed combo who is a pretty good cornerback but none of them have godlike stats like none of them have a not high 90 stat a high 99 stat Bosa is going to be one of the first cards in the game stock to hit 99. And don't say that, oh, my theme team, no, no. I'm saying, like, just power it up with a few chems. He's going to quite easily get to 99 finesse move and above 90 power move. Guys, this card's a monster. I think I might have to even take him out of my thing. I might have to replace Cameron Jordan with him. I'm going to be probably taking him or Nelson or Odell just because I'm an Odell fan. I still got to always keep him in the options. But if we can get more than one, I'll obviously be taking Bosa no matter what. I think he's one of the best options in this game. And I hope this helps you guys. Let's head back over to the Madden screen to close out this video. All right, guys, so that is about it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope this helps you guys with your ranking needs and who should take because you are going to be faced with this option pretty soon uh, as early as today if you want to get the solos done. But guys, that's about it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to go down below. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification, boys. Harvest and Christmas is upon us, guys. So come join the family so you guys can stay up to date with all your Madden needs. Comment down below your top four. I want to hear all your opinions and see how much you differ from mine. It'll be pretty interesting to see one of my bottom four and your top four. And give me a reason why if you're that different. And also make sure to spam, spam the like button, guys. Hopefully when this video is posted, I can take 100 likes in the first 30 minutes. That'd be awesome, guys. Can we do that? Who knows? But guys, that's about it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. See you guys in the next video. Peace.